In Australia, around 30,000 babies every year are diagnosed with reflux, and that can be a real pain in the esophagus, not only for bub, but it can certainly be a real source of angst for the family as well. So today on Mother Doctor Nurse, Deb and I are chatting all about reflux in babies. I'm Sarah Hunstead. I'm a mum of two and a paediatric nurse, and I'm joined as always by the fabulous holistic paediatrician, Dr. Deb. Deb Levy, who has also a mum of two, and we are coming to you from Gadigal and Bidjigal land today. So, Deb, oh, this is a massive subject. We could it be talking huge. about it for hours. It's huge. And, of course, as always, um, we can't give specific medical advice. But what we're going to go through today is if we can talk about like the signs and symptoms. We you know, what, what is reflux? Um, you know, what kind of signs and symptoms does it actually, you know, what happens in your baby? Um, how do you diagnose it? And, of course, what can you do and what might your doctor do as well? And please tag anyone in the comments below who you think will benefit from this good evidence-based information. So, Deb, I mean, first of all, you have to introduce this beautiful little furry thing that's sitting on your lap. I mean, we well, need to start feeling, there. She's, I don't know why, but she's feeling a bit stressy. So I just thought I'd pop her on my lap. Shampoo little thing has to have an operation on Friday. Where is she? There you go. This is little oh. Miss Lulu. Oh, poor <laughs> so Lulu. Sorry, so she's sitting on my lap. <laughs> Very good. And I've got my. So yeah, Sarah said I'm, I'm a mum of two, which I am. I have two daughters and I also have two fur babies. So. <laughs> Four. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, mum of four. I'm going to introduce you as that next time, Deb. Don't worry. There you go. So I think we should yeah. probably start at the very, very beginning. And can you explain to us what actually is reflux? It's a term that we hear bantered around all the time, but what exactly is it? Okay, well, firstly, I think we need to specify when we say reflux, we're actually mm -hmm. talking about gastroesophageal reflux. Um, there are different types of reflux. Um, the other big one is in the kidneys. So we're not yes. talking about that today. That's mm -hmm. called vesicoureteric reflux. So gastroesophageal mm -hmm. reflux is essentially, well, if we just break that word down, you get the gist of what it is. And mm -hmm. what it is, it's when this, the contents of the stomach reflux mm -hmm. into the esophagus or the food pipe. The thing, Sarah, is, is that the vast majority of babies are born with a degree of reflux. It's why babies have those spit-ups, you know, those really mm -hmm. annoying spit-ups. Yep. Um, Especially you when like, you're wearing nice, clean clothes, like a black jumper. Especially when you're wearing just... black. Especially when you're wearing black, because it just yep. marks up so much worse. Yep. Um, you know, so, and I, and I think what comes from that is the important thing to say that, you know, there is a spectrum. And, um, you know, medically speaking, we often refer to the spectrum of gastroesophageal reflux heading into gastroesophageal reflux disease. Mm -hmm. So on the very mild end is that reflux where you just get the spit ups, it's not bothering your baby, it's not causing them any pain, it's not interrupting their sleep, and it's certainly not interrupting their feeding or their growth. Mm -hmm. As things kind of go all the way to the extreme is when it becomes very painful which is obviously causing your baby a lot of distress and upset. Um, that pain can also lead to feed refusal. So they may not be gaining weight as, as um, they should be. Mm -hmm. And sometimes even that um, the milk that travels up that food pipe, they can sometimes even breathe it in and that's called aspiration and that can cause um, lung inflammation or infection. Things Gosh. like, um, exactly, including things like mm -hmm. pneumonia. Mm -hmm. You know, and that is certainly the, the you know, the, the more extreme end of the, the mm -hmm. spectrum. The um, majority of children that um, we will see that will require intervention in terms of treatment are often in the, in the middle somewhere, although, um, and, and I'm sure we'll dive into this, you know, mm -hmm. in my books, you have to tick a few boxes in order to need medication. Mm -hmm. Yep. No, absolutely. I'm really glad that you clarified that there is a spectrum of this too, because I think that's something that, you know, if you're Googling this, you'll get a, just a huge amount of information and not a lot of it talks about that. So thank you for clarifying that, Deb. So how do you get, how does your baby get diagnosed with reflux? Is it something that you have to go, you visit your paediatrician, there's certain things you talked about ticking boxes. Um, is it, you know, what exactly is that? Or is that a tricky it can one? Sometimes, sorry, Sarah? 
I was going to say, or is that really tricky being a I was about scientist? to say, it is actually, it yeah. can be tricky to diagnose. Yeah. Um, you know, for those of you who know me know that um, I, I don't like to overuse medication. And I think mm -hmm. that in order for a child to um, qualify for medication, it shouldn't necessarily be that knee-jerk reaction. You know, my baby's mm -hmm. crying a little bit. You know, they're having a few vomits. Could this be reflux? Let's try medication. Because, and I think now's probably a time to mention it, you know, every every treatment every medication has a possible side effect mm -hmm. and um although it may be necessary in some you have to often weigh it up you know and and the i guess the two main side effects that you know i i will um, explain to families are you know maybe, wait a second before i dive into that maybe i should just talk about exactly what i'm talking about in terms of medication um mm -hmm. and here i'm talking about something called proton pump inhibitors so also known as PPIs, you know, there are a whole lot of brand names, um, things like Losec, Nexium, you know, obviously these are all the different brand names that you may be a little bit more familiar with. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, so this, this, class, this, this class of medication called PPIs, proton pump inhibitors, what they do is they actually decrease the, the acid production in your, in your baby's stomach. So Theoretically, they won't actually change the um, frequency or volume of any vomiting that your child may be having. Mm -hmm. Although anecdotally, a lot of families say that it actually does improve. Um, mm -hmm. But what it does is it should decrease the pain because mm -hmm. by decreasing that acid level, there should be less pain with that reflux up, up into the food pipe. Yep. So um, I know I've jumped ahead a little bit, but I just wanted to cover, you know, why don't we just jump into giving medication? Mm -hmm. is that, you know, the the most common side effect that I would see is constipation. Mm -hmm. And as you can imagine, Sarah, if you've got a baby with reflux who then becomes constipated, it actually oh. often makes the reflux worse. Yeah, of course. You know, and certainly makes them uncomfortable. And yeah. um, the other big impact that I don't think a lot of people actually know about, and I'm not even sure a lot of um, practitioners know about, is mm -hmm. its impact on the gut microbiome. You know, we do know that um, proton pump inhibitors negatively impact the gut microbiome. So um, it's nothing that can't be rectified, um, but it's yep. just something to be aware of, you know. And, and mm -hmm. again, with all medication, it should always be, you know, do I really need this? And if you really need yep. it, 100% your baby needs to go on it. Yes. Um, yes. But do I really need it should always be the first um, question, in my opinion. Yep, absolutely. And I think that you've highlighted that beautifully, that there, of course, there are babies who absolutely need this medication, but it's something that you need to have an in-depth discussion with, with your, you know, uh, treating doctor. And that's why working as a team together is so important, mm -hmm. being able to ask questions like this. So we jumped into treatment a little bit. Yeah, but um, Deb, No, no, no. It's a good thing. It's a good thing, Deb. It's fine. Um, but what are some of the signs and symptoms that might alert you that your baby may be suffering from gastroesophageal reflux? So I've mentioned the vomiting, but not all babies vomit. <laughs> so mm -hmm. um, vomiting can be that just those normal little spit ups. It can be large volumes. Um, it can be painful for the baby. In other words, they, they vomit and they cry. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so that, that's the one side. It can be vomiting, not all reflux um, you actually see the vomit. Sometimes it just stops here and then you're not going to see it coming up. And that's what often is called silent reflux. The other thing that you may see in relation to um, pain is difficulty around feeding. So often you'll see when you talk about a baby grimacing when they feed, um, you know, it's that kind of a look that they'll frown, you know, they look like they're in pain. Um, they may pull off grimace, not really mm -hmm. want to go back on, get a bit fussy, try and go back on, um, and then do the same again. Mm -hmm. uh, they can actually stiffen their whole body when they're in pain. They can, what we call back arching, it's called Sandifer's syndrome. Um, they mm -hmm. typically will, it's almost like they're like a plank, you know, their whole body mm -hmm. will, will tense straight and they'll often put their, their neck, so maybe not be able to see because it's mirrored, but often will, will put their neck to the one side, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that is quite, quite indicative of of reflux right. um you know other things their sleep could be disrupted they can be getting recurrent ear infections they can be getting really really snotty they can be getting the mm -hmm. you can hear them swallowing all the time they can have that noisy breathing um mm -hmm. I can't actually imitate it. I, was, I thought I could maybe try, but I've actually <laughs> I'd like to hear it if you can <laughs> of course, you can, can I do this um 
but you know if, if you can it's it's like a no i can't you know it, it's okay. like if you could imagine if there's a whole lot of fluid sitting at the back here you know mm-hmm. and, and there's that kind of like gurgly sound um mm-hmm. you know so really it can be all of those those noises um mm-hmm. often babies who have reflux don't like to be in car seats um right and that's because of the if you think about how when a baby's in a car seat they're kind of scrunched mm-hmm. up yeah you know and exactly so just the mechanical mm-hmm. pressure can increase that that reflux mm-hmm. um i'm trying to think of anything else uh da, 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 da. i mean those are the, the signs in little babies you know all the children yep. and that's what we're talking about here so you know i, I mm-hmm. think i've i've covered i've covered most of them sarah phil and if there's anything you feel i've forgotten yep. no i think you have covered absolutely everything there but i think you know the question is, if your baby has been diagnosed with reflux, we've talked about medications, we've gone into that already, but is apart from medications, is there anything that you can do? Um, certainly uh, know that there's a lot of advice in forums on the internet out there, a lot of it, which is just absolute crap. But if you could <laughs> sort through <laughs> some of the things that we can actually do, that would be great. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, there are a couple of things I always do first before, um, in the majority of children. I'm saying I'm pausing because there are a couple of children who I will straight off the bat and say, look, your, your bub needs medication. But um, yep. the majority of children, I'll go through a few steps. And, you mm-hmm. know, those steps will include, you know, how you feed your baby, how you mm-hmm. burp your baby. Do you hold them upright after a feed? And these are all things that, you know, we go into in more mm-hmm. detail, um, you know, because of safety reasons, it's no longer recommended to elevate the head of the bed mm-hmm. uh, in terms of your baby's crib bassinet. Yep. Um, because previously we, we would always recommend mm-hmm. that. Yep. But um, because of the risk of, you know, sudden unexplained um, infant death, Mm-hmm. they have now changed those recommendations so yes. and Sarah I'm sure that, that you can either post it or maybe recap yep. the, those safety precautions for families and no, um, you know so definitely it's it's about you know minimizing the impact of gravity or maximizing mm-hmm. the effect of gravity depends which way you want to look at it by keeping your baby mm-hmm. upright after feel, feed helping them burp um, properly um, and trying to minimize the amount of air that they gulp in as well as another tip mm-hmm. you know, right. and because if you could imagine if your baby's gulping in a whole lot of air, it's going to distend their stomach even more, which again can make yep. that reflex worse. You know, and yep. that may be um, around breastfeeding to me, bottles you're using whenever you're feeding your baby. And so, yeah. you know, it may be involving a lactation consultant or, you know, there are a whole lot of steps and obviously it's very personalized. Yep. Um, Absolutely. You know, the other thing around mum's diet you know, I, I'm a very big fan of removing um, dairy and soy products from mums when babies have mm-hmm. reflux, and there certainly okay. is literature to back that up. Just be careful if, as a mum, if you are eliminating any foods, you really need to ensure you have good nutrient intake. And, um, you know, I also always say for breastfeeding mums, you should still be on your prenatal vitamin. Um, okay. The caveat being I'm not an adult doctor, but... <laughs> You know, it's just we have to, you know, mums have to be um, nourished in yeah. order to nourish their children. Yeah. Um. You know, so those are you know those are a lot of the a lot of the um, I guess non medical something I don't like, which sometimes is recommended, is um, I know Sarah goes, hmm, Dave's going to get controversial. <laughs> that. I don't like feed thickeners. Mm-hmm. Um. And I don't like like feed thickeners because I find they're not that effective and they often mm-hmm. constipate your baby, which, again, makes things worse. So I yeah. am not a fan of them. Yes, people, you can go wild in the comments and say, Deb, you're talking to blankets, you cured my baby. Absolutely. You know, there's everyone um, has had their own experience with them. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. It's very, very interesting that when I, before we did this step, I Googled reflux in babies. I do this with every subject that we talk about because I'm interested to see what people will see first when this happens. I mean, I know it's all a little bit different for all of us with all those algorithms tracking us, but, you know, generally, (laughs) yeah, I know it's all a little bit different, but it was interesting that it was advertisements for thick and feeds that came up first um, on my feed. Yes, I know. And that's concerning. So as Deb said, you know, I think it's 
it's really important that you don't just go out and buy anything like that for your baby. Don't swap that. Consult your medical practitioner. Please, please, please don't change anything without doing that. It's really, really important. And, you know, some of the myths that are out there as well was blowing my mind. I was looking at some of the, um, you know, the formulas and advice from some people. Oh, my grandmother said it's a really good idea, um, you know, to put something like a honey mix through to make it thicker. And I'm going, oh, my goodness, don't, not really? under it, you know. Yes, just random stuff like this. Um, it was a minefield, Deb. You would actually find it really interesting. Number one, please don't give honey to babies under the age of 12 months and yes it's not going to do anything either like it's just yeah yeah I know I know I know but that's why we're here because this is what we do and give you all the good evidence-based information so if anybody has any questions now is the time to put them in the comments I will uh, get the red nose guidelines um, that talk about safe sleeping and also positioning if your baby has reflux and I'll pop them in the um, comments below as well so you can have a read of that. But in the meantime, Deb, is there anything else that you would like to talk to us about before we finish up today? Um, no, I think that I've covered the majority of things other than to say okay. reflux have a variety of presentations it can be very difficult to diagnose this is not a, di a diagnostic test for it in young babies mm -hmm. um those are too invasive and we don't do them on such young babies and mm -hmm. um there are other therapies i've obviously just mentioned the most common one but there are other medications that are sometimes used Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And remembering too that it's a spectrum that some kids happily will suffer from gastroesophageal reflex and be perfectly fine exactly. and others at the other end of the spectrum won't be. So yeah, see, it's about making those, sure. Um, sorry, we call those happy no, no. chuckers. <laughs> I love and it. And it's just the inconvenience of having to change their clothes all the time. But as long as they're gaining weight yeah. and it's not bothering them, it's all okay. Um, the other thing I just wanted to say um again just to empower families is if your child is prescribed a medication it should be a course it's not never ending it's not months and months on end it is a defined period of time that your child will be on this medication and it is then slowly weaned off it's not stopped abruptly because then you get rebound symptoms so i just want to flag that um you know in in case in case you haven't been given that kind of guidance no, perfect. Thank you, Deb. Sage advice as always. So it doesn't look like we've got any uh, questions today. Remember, we can only do it while we're live. If you're watching the recording of this, unfortunately, we can't answer your questions. But we will be back uh, very soon. It is school holidays coming up, so we'll see how we go over the next couple of weeks. We may be uh, delaying until afterwards, but we'll see how if we can get our act together. Ah, now, I knew this would happen. Thank you very much, Dana, for your question. Um, can I just bring this up? So Deb, Dana has asked, can silent reflux have implications years later on in a child's life? Newborn had silent reflux, was medicated, and now has chronic gut issues as a three-and-a-half-year-old. Are there any links? Well, obviously it's it's difficult to prove whether or not it's, it's linked directly. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, and I also don't know what, what chronic gut issues your child has. But the most common thing that I would actually see is um, fussy eating. So right. in children who have significant discomfort with reflux, as, sorry, babies have significant mm -hmm. discomfort with reflux, start to link or make the association between feeding and pain. And that can then translate into when they start solids not wanting to eat because of the, mm -hmm. that association that it's going to be painful. Or perhaps it still is painful. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, I definitely, I definitely see that. And I know with my fussy eaters that I see in clinic, I'll always go back and ask about reflux. Helps me mm -hmm. understand things more. In terms of um, the chronic gut issues, um, you know, Dana, if, if you follow me at all, you know that I'm a strong believer in the power of the gut microbiome mm -hmm. and we know that proton pump inhibitors um, impact that. So if your child has been on it, then, you know, yes, there's a potential for that long term, but it's always a part of the big picture. So, um, yes, there's a possibility that there was a link, mm -hmm. but again, without knowing all the details, it's impossible to say. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. I see what you mean, yeah, I'm going... Yeah, 
Well, again, you know, I'm just just looking at your your further comment, and and I think you know about constipation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I think you know it then becomes hard to know what comes first, the chicken or the egg. Um, mm-hmm. You know, were, were there already underlying problems causing you know that that then made your baby have some reflux? So, and you've already h- highlighted that dairy intolerance, which is which is why I say I, I will regularly recommend mm-hmm. families to mums breastfeeding mums to stop that or i'll change formulas to the um hypoallergenic ones which means um that the body won't react in the same way Mm -hmm. i know that's yeah so tricky um but thank you deb for your insights there as always so there are no other questions at the moment. Um, yeah, Dano has just commented right. as well. It's been such a mystery and, yeah, it, it often is. That's the thing with medicine. Often it is a process of elimination, isn't it, Deb, which can be uh-huh. a really hard road to travel, but unfortunately, um, yeah, we don't always have the answers. But we will be back um, in the next week or two. Not sure yet. We'll let you know. So please make sure you keep an eye out on our Facebook pages and Instagram as well. So we will see you soon. And don't forget, please post in the comments below or DM us the subjects you would like us to talk about. So thanks for joining us today, everyone.